Welcome back everyone. Today we're here to bring you the much anticipated one year review of the Winnebago Rebel. And today we're going to cover the good, the bad, the ugly, cooking, storage solutions, and one major upgrade we made in the back to improve functionality. As avid dual sport motorcycle enthusiasts, Jim and I had traveled the country on our motorcycles, normally sleeping in tents and not taking a shower for days. I started to gently work my way into Jim's mind with thinking about motorhomes or travel trailers to carry our dual sport bikes and eventually we started looking at vans. We flew down to Eugene, Oregon to check out different types of vans. We weren't exactly sure what we wanted. We had seen videos of the Rebel and honestly in videos and pictures the Rebel really didn't appeal to us. When we got to Oregon and we took a walkthrough of the Rebel, we realized that it is rugged, four-wheel drive, and it's everything that we've been looking for in a recreational vehicle. So over the last 12 months, we've put this Rebel to the test. We've endured all types of temperatures, all types of weather, and all types of terrain. We looked into doing a conversion ourselves, but we had to be honest, we're not very handy people. We would have ended up with a mattress on the floor as a van conversion. This review is based on actual experience rather than looking at the website, checking out specs, and driving it for a week or two. This is based on our experience over the last 24,000 miles in the last 12 months, driving it as a daily driver every single day. The Winnebago Revel is equipped with a 188 horsepower 3 liter V6 turbo diesel. One of the questions that we get quite often is how the power holds up going uphill, downhill. Do we see any kind of lag or anything like that? I can tell you we have not had that problem at all. We average between anywhere from 14.5 all the way up to 17.5 miles per gallon as we're driving down the highway. It all depends on how hard we're driving, how fast we're driving and whether we're going up and down hills. The sweet spot that we've found for this engine is about 61 miles per hour. That's where we get the best uh, fuel consumption possible. The engine might be really important to Jim, but there was a couple of things that were important to me. And one of those things was it had to be rugged. Some of the other vans that I stepped into were so nice that I felt like having Ember and the both of us in there I would be too afraid to be keeping it clean all the time. Also having a good shower was really important to me. We have one on the rear and one inside and they both have hot water. Also the cassette toilet being fixed inside of it was important. Instead of having to roll up a curtain and shove it into a cabinet and waiting for that curtain to dry and pulling out a porta potty, this one made a lot more sense to me. We're going to open the awning. worked. What was that little thing you did at the beginning? This little edge on the awning kind of sticks. So if I just tap it and then it comes up. See how it held up? Still looks brand new. When we get to a campsite, whether it's boondocking or actual campground we have to go through the process the long process of setting up camp
done. One of the challenges that we've had in living in 60 square feet of space is finding room for all of our stuff. I tend to need more stuff than Jim does. One of his pet peeves is when I have items up on the dashboard kind of floating around and rolling around as he's driving. We had to find a solution to that. But first I'll show you what's going on on my side over here. This is the one and only drink holder that I need. This is also where I keep my book, my wallet, and that's about it. I think I have some hydrocortisone cream in there or something. I also have the first aid kit on my side. Let me open it up. Even with the first aid kit in this little compartment, there's still plenty of space. Let's put other stuff. The Rebel doesn't come with any floor mats at all, so we recently installed the WeatherTech Custom Floor Liner, which runs from my side to Jim's side and helps with dirt, gravel, rocks, and all the dirtiness of camping and being outdoors. To keep all the stuff that's usually rolling around on the dash all in one spot, I have these Overland Gear Guy pouches, and this one holds a lot of stuff, and everything that used to roll around on the dash is now all contained in here. I put it right above my head and keep this area nice and clean. Moving to my side of the van, we have my Overland Gear Guide pouch, which contains double sided tape, Gorilla Glue, and of course our stickers. I have my cup holder down here and up here and of course containing our tire tools one of the things that we always carry with us now is this collapsible water jug I got it at REI and as soon as the water is out of it, it collapsed down to nothing. Let's talk about the good. With the short wheelbase, we can park pretty much anywhere we want to park. And we have pulled into some pretty tight spaces, although we like to park further away most of the time. Um, there have been times that Jim has put us into a very small parking spot in, let's say, a Walmart parking lot. Another thing is we can go anywhere we want to go. Anywhere that a four-wheel drive vehicle can go, the Rebel has taken us there. Another thing that I absolutely love is the Euro lift bed. If we would have converted a van ourselves or had one converted, I'm not quite sure we would have ever had that type of bed system in place. This gives us the ability to put all of our stuff in the back and better utilize the space in the garage. The cassette toilet is another good what we thought that would be a nightmare we weren't sure if it would start to smell after a while but i can assure you that after using it every single day for the past 365 days it smells exactly the same as it did the day we bought it the cassette toilet is easy to dump it's you can dump it in an outhouse a regular toilet or a dump station when we went to look at vans, we would look at one van, such as the Coachman Galleria, and then we would go back to the Revel and we would compare the clearance. Then we would go and look at the Travato and go back to the Revel and just, again, be drawn in by the clearance. I also love the versatility because we've been able to go fishing in the summer and northern lights hunting in the winter, and it has kept us happy all year round. So as we're talking about storage, one of the things we rely on a lot is these felt bags. And you can find those in the link down below. On this side, we keep all of our magma pots. So it's a whole set right inside this bag. We have our drum, Ember's boots, our lights.
We should pull this out. I want to use it. And our speaker. We've made a few changes to the storage system that we have inside the closet since our nine month review. We showed you before that we added the mirror. And these are my storage systems. I had them a little bit more organized than Jim may have had in his, what he just showed you. This one is actually an empty, somewhat junk bin. It, the only thing that's really important in, in there is our shower head. And if I was to change anything, um, eventually I do plan on changing the shower head, but this actually works perfectly fine for now. But later down the road, I might change that. A little water bottle, some bags that I used to burn. This bin is underwear and socks. As you can see, not a whole lot in that bin either. This bin is where we keep all our coveted toilet paper. And in the bottom of this bin, we also have a SOG system, which eventually, I think this summer, we will install. There's also a random umbrella in there. In my middle bin, I have our chemicals and cleaning supplies. I love these rags for cleaning. If you watched our video on cleaning in Walmart, this is where I discovered these. Um, they're easy to use and washable because we don't use a whole lot of paper towel. This bin is where we keep all of our towels and washcloths. Um, I keep some of my toiletries in here as well because we have four towels and two washcloths and just a couple of toiletries. The stuff that doesn't go, let me show you this, in here. This is our little cubby that holds my shampoo, conditioner. I like the travel size stuff and I also have face wash in here, Kiehl's facial cleanser. This is a nice little cubby for all of my crap. We don't usually use the toilet paper holder. We've also discovered that this bucket from Lowe's, a plastic bag in there, and it works perfectly fine as our trash can. Here I have our laundry bag. I put up a command hook here, but this is where we store all of our dirty clothes. I also like to keep the shower curtain up, and this way I can just push it back behind the bamboo shelves and it dries out without any concerns and it just stays back there the entire time. In this cabinet, we have one more cleaner that I use more often, our tea kettle, coffee, coffee grinder, and our French press. There's still a lot more room for more stuff if I needed it, but I really don't want it. Here we have a dish drying mat and the reason why we put this down is because if we open this and let's say this little container happened to fall out, it protects our induction oven from getting cracked or broken. Not much has changed about the sink. Still the same marine sink. These we like to not usually leave in here when they're wet. We'll hang them up outside to dry, but we just used it, so it's still sitting in there. It also protects the sink from getting damaged by the faucet. The latches, we haven't had any issues with our latches at all. This drawer has, is, this drawer is longer, as you can see. It holds all the wider stuff like spatulas. And down here is all my girl stuff. Let's talk about the refrigerator. This latch has been a little bit loose, but it's not going to take a whole lot to just tighten it up and secure that again. I haven't had any major issues with that. Freezer is small. It leaves a little bit to be desired, but it does hold a small pizza, ice cream. Another thing that we have discovered is this knob tends to mysteriously move on its own. So one of the solutions to that is to take the knob off and put it in a drawer and set it at a temperature that you desire so it doesn't move by itself. I've actually discovered that this pantry holds a lot more than you might think. Random goodies, pasta sauce, chili, this is all our non-perishable items. Um, dried peas. It actually goes pretty far back if you can see. 
Let's talk a little bit about cooking in the Rebel. All we have is electric and the induction. With this, we've had to get very creative in learning how to make one pot meals where we generally have a carb, a protein, and a vegetable. Recently, we've mostly had meat and vegetables. Tonight, I'm going with camp food, and I'm just gonna be 100% honest with you. Sometimes camp food is the best food to have when you are busy working, doing what we're doing today. Tonight, it's gonna be macaroni and cheese and chili. Got steamy. I set the timer for seven minutes. Forgot the most important part about cooking. You have to turn on the Max Air fan. We learned when we were in Hawaii that the highest level is really good to be pulling the air through. When it's hot, it sucks all the hot air out. The fan's on. The lights are on. I'm cooking. We're still getting a solar charge. Everything looks good. Dinner is ready. Thank you. This is what the lights look like at night. One of our subscribers asked us how we make the Revel more functional for both of us and if we're able to spread out. And we found the perfect solution to make that happen and I'm excited to show you. One of the first things we did was utilize this space more effectively with Overland Gear Guys bags. And before we had had all of our emergency equipment in a bin in the back of the Rebel and now we can use these bags. We have one on each side. And it's shocking how much they hold. With such a small amount of space, we really needed something to enhance our storage capabilities and something more comfortable for us to sort of relax in in the afternoons and the evenings when we're out in the middle of nowhere and have a spectacular view. For that solution, we went with the GLSS or the Garage Lounge Storage System. And this is a product built by a Canyon Adventure Vans We'll leave a link for them down below. Uh, they've been extremely helpful to work with. They're very creative. They actually have some additional modifications for this system that they've put out. As you can see from the two benches, you have two feet of space in here. There's a lot of storage space that's added and some easy access points with these doors. So this is all of my tools. And then the cushion simply lifts up and our clothes are inside here. On this side, again, we have an easy access panel. We keep our water hose in here, windshield uh, washer fluid, uh, both of our scrapers. And then we use felt bins down there to keep everything from rattling. But that's additional storage as well to include our bug screens. So this is made with 8020 aluminum, so it's super lightweight. It takes about five minutes, if even that, to set up. Um, the tensile strength is about 35,000 pounds per inch, which is incredibly sturdy. The other piece that we really like about this is the lagoon table. We're able to set up our laptop. We can swing it in, swing it out, move it around wherever we need it. The 
this is where our heating vent is. And as you can see, it directs the heat out. They've left a space there and it's been working perfectly. In the hooks you see is how it is held in. These benches remove incredibly easily. Just slide it out. And we're still continuing to use these waterproof bags for our clothing. This one is Jim's. This one is mine. And what I love about these bags is they still hold a lot of stuff. I probably have four sweatshirts, four pairs of pants. <laughs> underneath the bags we have all of our shoes and there's Jim's tool bag when we're driving down the road one of the things that we've noticed is we get no rattles at all there's no sounds coming from back here no clumps no banging or anything like that so it is a sturdy built uh, system and so far, so good. We absolutely love it. This is exactly what we had in mind when we thought about how we'd want to do the back of the Revel. And when we saw them on Instagram, we saw a picture of it and we're like, oh my gosh, look, that is exactly what we're looking for. We want somewhere to hold our clothes and our organize our hoses. And when we saw that it would go directly under the bed and create additional living space, we couldn't resist. One of the other pieces of information about this system is that if you have larger items that you want to use a garage for, this comes out really, really easily. So you just pull your stuff out, pop this out, and you have that extra space that you are wanting as well. If you want to see the additional add-ons that they have, they include the drawer that pulls out. Check them out on Instagram at Canyon Adventure Vans. In some of the pictures you'll see that the original stock bedding is in here, but this is the bedding that I created with a memory foam to make our bed a little bit more comfortable. And to do that I just took an old black flat sheet, some memory foam, cut it up, and it is the most comfortable bed. Black may not have been the best decision, but with ember hair, but it's very comfortable. Also, we want to point out that you can get different color variations. It doesn't have to be black with green piping. They have a variety of colors that you can choose from. When we were looking into this system, the first question I had was if it could be turned into a lounge area. And if it could, what held it up? I contacted Canyon Adventure Vans through Instagram. They sent me immediately, they sent me a picture of these hooks and how much weight they hold. And they contacted me within 15 minutes of me asking the question. It's great for lazy afternoons. Push our table out and we can watch a movie. At night I like to, we sit together on this side, my feet go straight across and it's really comfortable. Now if you have additional people, this also turns into an additional seat. Look at that. It also, if you want to get really creative, you can put these cushions down onto the floor. Your bed can be down. And if somebody doesn't mind sleeping right underneath you, you have an extra bed. To store the additional cushions, they simply sit perfectly right back here in the back. If you were to ask me the one modification that we've made that has been my absolute favorite besides upgrading the bed, this is it. By far. So check them out on Instagram, Canyon Adventure Vans, and also their website. We'll put a link to it down below.
So talking about some of the bad stuff in the van, one of the things that we used to really like was these window covers back here on the back windows. But they do let in a lot of light. So one of our solutions to that was this partition right here. This partition is made by thisvanlife.net and it's a handmade sort of a sleeping bag type material. Extremely warm, blocks out the sun, makes this van like pitch black even in the daylight. So it's super hard to tell what time you need to be getting out of bed. Two additional bad things that we found about the Rebel is one, the tailpipe which hangs a little low. It's gotten pretty beat up over the past year. And on the 2020, this is actually raised a little bit. I don't know how much of a difference that would make. I think the tailpipe should be rerouted to the back. Another bad thing that we've identified is all the brackets on the running boards are developing rust. So that's, a, that's one of the items that we can fix ourselves. We will fix it ourselves. We just haven't gotten around to it yet. The third bad that we want to talk about is inside this bathroom door. And there used to be a handle that ran pretty much the length of this entire door. That handle worked its way out and all the screws came loose. Tried to re-screw it back in, but it's particle board, so those screws weren't savable. It really didn't function much or have much function. So it's not a big deal for us that it's not in there. But when we're talking about the quality that a lot of people talk about, this was the only thing in the last year that has fallen apart. Now let's talk about the ugly. We had to rack our brains to find something that we absolutely didn't like about the Rebel. And there's one thing that happened within the past month that we realized is ugly. This windshield right here, it attracts rocks like a magnet. We have several dings and then as we were going down the road a snowplow went past us with that big rock right in the middle. It was loud, it sounded like a gunshot went off. And I don't think that this is something that is necessarily a rebel issue. I think this is a sprinter issue. We've heard that it is common with this windshield, common for rocks to find it. So I think that the windshield might be one of our biggest expenses as we move forward because um, we have about five dings and one massive hole. And we've already fixed it once. Yeah, we went to Safe Light and had the little dings fixed and now we're just going to wait until all the gravel is gone to get a new windshield. Highly recommend that if you're looking at the Rebel to get windshield insurance. We did go with the upgraded tire package which includes the BFGs and the Method racing wheels. These tires have held up incredibly well. They've treated us very good even through snow and ice. One of the questions that we received was do we ever use chains? We do not. The only time that I've ever seen chains in Alaska is on semis and school buses. That's the reason why we went with four wheel drive to begin with is because we are longtime Alaskans. We understand how to drive on snow and ice and the four wheel drive just helps with some of that stability for us. As we've mentioned, 24,000 miles in one year, that means we did have to go get our A service done. If you're Looking at a Rebel or a Mercedes Sprinter to begin with, keep in mind service is expensive. Our A service cost us $872. I'd like to share with you five things that have been my favorite since we purchased the Rebel that we've included in our gear. 
The first thing you have all probably noticed is I absolutely love my buffalo wool. My mom made this hat and she made this scarf out of their earth lace. And you, when you think about wool, you might think that it is itchy or scratchy. It's not, it is incredibly soft and warm and lightweight. And I actually forget that I have the hat on. I wear it all the time because my hair is always a mess. I also have their gloves. Look how light these are. Um, it, these keep my hands completely warm down to negative temperatures. These I haven't put in yet, but I'm going to be putting them in my boots to go along with my socks. I've been wearing, I have two pairs of buffalo wool socks. I've been wearing them non-stop for about the past nine months and they still feel brand new. So when it comes to quality products, the Buffalo Wool Company is absolutely worth checking out. The other product that we have that I love is our Overland Gear Guy bags and you've seen these in some of our videos. They're durable, well-made, they're made in the USA and they hold so much stuff and keep everything organized. One of the products that I'm interested in purchasing off their website is the bag that goes on the back of the ladder and that can hold our trash or firewood. I'm also really interested in their laundry bag as well. So I'm going to go ahead and probably purchase those within the next couple of weeks. And another thing that I loved about these is I handpicked this color. This is one of my favorite colors. They have a variety of colors that you can choose from. It doesn't necessarily have to be green. So check out Overland Gear Guy. They're pretty awesome as well. The other thing that we purchased that I love is the Havelock wool. We didn't want to consider that a bad in, when it comes to the Revel because, again, we feel like the Revel is adequately insulated for average temperatures. But when we went ahead and filled in the gaps with the wool, it just made it a lot more comfortable and cozy for us in minus degree temperatures. Ember found water again. <laughs> Uh, the other thing that I couldn't live without is our magma pots because when it comes to storage, all of our pots and pans are contained in this little bag right here. And a lot of other Rebel owners have also purchased them. In fact, it was from another Rebel owner that we decided that these were pretty cool. They're stackable. And you have your pots, your lids. There's actually four pots, lids. And then the handles are in the drawer. Let's see. And we leave our handle in the drawer, which saves space. And yeah, the other thing that I really like about them is uh, they fit perfectly into the sink, so they it's so easy to wash them. This is if you're going down the road and you don't have this case, but this case is super handy. Last but not least, you guys know that I love my Pendleton blanket. It keeps me cool in the summer and very warm in the winter, and I love the color. It gave us a little splash of color for, um, for the van, and this was the first thing we purchased that was one of our larger purchases, so the Pendleton blanket is at the top of my list. One of the questions that we received recently was, what are five mods that we would do inside this van? Number one, the GLSS. It is the perfect mod. We've already completed it, but it was something we were really looking forward to. So now that that one's off the list, we can move to our number two mod that we are working on next, and that is gonna be a Backwoods Adventures bumper to include the winch and the lighting system. It makes a huge difference. It's something that we are looking forward to, and now we're saving up for that. The third mod that we would do is uh, get a lift and suspension upgrade. Not because we have to, it does work pretty good how it is, but there are some places that we wanna make sure that we have even more clearance. Plus I'm a guy. So having a big beastie van is something that I wanna do. Can I add something here? You're the driver. I'm in the passenger seat and I tend to go like this a lot. So if we can stop that a little bit with a little bit of better suspension, I'd greatly appreciate that. The fourth item on our list, which is probably going to be the next thing that we do, or the first thing now, is upgrade our stereo system. We want to have a surround sound system all inside the van. So that is one of the things that we will be doing very soon. The stereo system that's in here stock is not very good. 
and we like our music and we like movies. So if we can plug in, that will make it sound so much better. The fifth mod that we're planning to do is the Rebel does tow 5,000 pounds. We're looking at a trailer that is a toy hauler called the Intech Flyer Explorer. And that way we can take our dual sport motorcycles with us. If you're watching this video because you're interested in purchasing a new or used Rebel, we highly recommend that you check out two valuable groups on Facebook. Winnebago Rebel 4x4 and Rebel Owners and Wannabes. There you'll find a comprehensive list on anything from buying walkthrough tips to creative owner modifications. And if you're comparing and contrasting to make a decision on what's right for you, we also recommend that you step inside the van that you're interested in and get a feel for each van. The Revel wasn't our first choice, but ultimately it became the best decision that we have ever made. We will be doing another review in, in about three months to update you on our modification list and how things are holding up for us. Until then, we have great adventures planned for this summer. They've had to change a little bit, but we're still going to keep going. And until then, if you're new to our channel, hit that subscribe button. If this video was helpful, helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if we left out any questions that you feel you have or anything that we didn't cover, feel free to comment below. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again soon.